Hello everyone and thanks for hanging out with me. Big, big, mega news on the Volkswagen ID3. Uh, German magazine, Automoto and Sport. They have a, a YouTube channel and they have a guy in there that tests a lot of cars from gasoline cars, diesel cars, everything. And he tested the Volkswagen ID3, a pre-production model, and they released a video yesterday. And it's a really, really good video, 45 minutes. I will link it in the description below. He's a very good guy. He's not so he's not judgmental about uh, elect, uh, electric cars and anything. He's very knowledgeable about the topic. A really great video, but it's in German. Uh, and um, like I said, I'll link it in the description below. If you can speak German, watch it. It's great. I don't think there's an English subtitle in there. It just was a German one that I've seen. But I will sum up everything that he shows and that he tells us because you see a lot of things that you didn't know before. And he tells us a lot of things that we didn't know before. Of course, it's a pre-production model, so it might not be true in the final model. But let's start. So it's a, it, it, this was not a, a prototype per se, built by hand. It, was, it came down from a production line, but it's still a prototype. So what we can see uh, when he opens the driver's door is electric seats, everything that you need. You can see in the door, uh, electric windows, electric adjustment for the mirrors, you can see a, a handle to adjust the steering wheel and you can see a bit uh, that the instrument cluster is not very big so I, I, I think it, it could be the one that was in the Seat Elborn. What you can see is that there are normal headrests, not not like in the Seat where it was weird ones, the big the big thing that are connected to, to your, your back, so it's a normal headrest like that. He then goes into in, in, the, in the back seats, and you can see there's a lot of space, uh, leg room, uh, even headroom. He's, he said he's 190 and has a lot of uh, still space in there. You can see electric windows in the back. Um, you can see that there's nothing in in between the seats on the bottom, so so no hump or anything. And there was something was hidden. There was was a blanket over. So I don't know if these are air vents or there's a 12 volt outlet or there's USB. Be, uh, I don't know. In the trunk, you can see an extra little uh, things underneath. So, like in most electric cars, and you can see a 12 volt outlet. <coughs> no electric uh, uh, trunk door. So, we had to do it by hand. That's fine. And you can see that ski hole, so you can put your ski through. About charging, had a few new things. So, the 45 uh, kilowatt hour battery. AC can only charge 7.2 and charge DC 100 kilowatt. The 58 kilowatt hour battery, which will be the final, uh, the first first edition, can charge with 11 kilowatt AC and and again 100 kilowatt on DC. And the 77 kilowatt hour battery, so the biggest one, can charge 11 kilowatt AC again, but 125 kilowatt on DC. They told him 260 km of WLTP range can be charged in 30 minutes. About the driving, he couldn't do any cornering, but he said that the power is okay, the reach and everything will go in detail in a second. Top speed is 160 km an hour, and uh, 0 to 100 should be under 8 seconds, but no exact number. It's a 150 kilowatt motor, rear wheel drive, 310 newton meters of torque, but only for 30 seconds. Then it, uh, the power goes down a bit. So like in the in the Audi e-tron, where you have that boost, it comes comes back down. He says it's very quiet in there, and it's a very quiet motor because it's in the back, rear wheel drive, and it's a. Uh, permanent magnet synchro motor and it spins up to 16,000 rpm. When he was driving you can see the, the brake lights and the, the LED lights and you can see that the signal lights is the animated one like Audi has. When he shows just the battery and the motor and everything you can see that there and he, he talks about it that there are disc brakes in the front but drum brakes in the back because of the region, they think that the drum brakes will be enough uh, brake force and the front ones are more important. 
you can see that the gear change is being done on the steering wheel like in Tesla and it looks a bit like like the um, the, the, the i3 from BMW stick and, and there's like in the e-golf you have the gear D for no uh, region and B for strong region and the region is is set to 0.2 G's of braking uh, they said that the Audi e-tron for example 0.3 it's not that strong it, it, it's a good region he said but it's not amazingly strong because they couldn't do that when they break the rear wheel the, the, the wheels in the back because then it can be unstable if the, the, the region would be too strong he, he uh, estimates the consumption of the car at, at around 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. He, he did that in a very nice way, how he came up with the numbers. The weight should be around 1.6 to 1.7 tons. And the battery in the 58 kilowatt hour battery is 400, uh, 400 kilograms and 90 kilograms less for the 45 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, the only detail then, he has, has a lot of details in there, but there what was interesting about environmental things is that there's a lot of cobalt in the battery. They couldn't get the, the chemistry as, as good as Tesla has. Tesla has uh, 2.8 grams of cobalt in one cell, and here uh, Volkswagen have 10 grams of cobalt in there. But they, they say that they uh, are monitoring how cobalt is being mined and everything. He, he said it's a lot of talking, he has no idea of proving anything, he just hopes that it will be done the way that Volkswagen is saying they will. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Watch that video, it's a really great video. Uh, it's 45 minutes long, it's really good. Check it out. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.